Now this is one convoluted family mess. There was a sinister plot to murder a son-in-law, a hitman who was actually an undercover detective, and a 69-year-old grandmother on her way to prison. We pulled everybody together to get the real story about what went down with this so-called well-to-do family in Florida. And also joining us, a psychotherapist who shocked us when he said he believes we all have some murderous instincts. I don't know about that. Mm -mm, didn't like that at all, but it made for a fascinating show. Take a look. Meet Lee Goldsmith. She's a well-to-do socialite from Florida. Believe it or not, this grandmother is perhaps on her way to prison. She was convicted of paying $10,000 to a man she hired to kill her son-in-law. Later in this program, we're gonna meet the intended victim, her son-in-law, and his wife, who is Lee's only daughter. But first, I want you to see and hear what a hidden police camera picked up as Lee stepped into a car to discuss the murder with a man she thought was the contract killer, but was really an undercover detective. Okay. Open it up. I want you to make sure. Okay. It's thousands. I put a thousand with the last picture. Okay. So each each bundle is a thousand. Each bundle is a thousand. There are nine bundles there. Okay. And you're satisfied. Okay. Everybody's happy. That's all. Except, <laughs> Except for who? I don't want to look in the mood. <laughs> yeah, I don't think he's too happy. No. But uh, he was asking for it. He got it. So. That was not, that was, I just want to emphasize because you see so many rea reenactments on television, that was the real thing. That wasn't a reenactment at all. Lee was sentenced to five and a half years in prison. The court will not allow her to leave Broward County, Florida. So she joins us now from the living room of her home along with her husband, Milton. And with us here in Chicago is Lee's attorney, Joel Hershorn, who is appealing this case. That's why I said she is perhaps on her way to prison. Lee, when uh, you've seen that tape, have you not? Yes, I have, Oprah. And when you see that tape, it makes you feel what? Sad, uh -huh. unhappy. Um, disappointed and surprised. And just disappointed and surprised. So you aren't denying at all that that is your voice and that you said those things and that you did put out a contract on him. You're not. That was that was the worst tape, and uh, that was no. I'm not denying it. Not okay. that particular tape. No. So you did actually put out a contract on your son-in-law. I wouldn't put it that way. I tried to back out of it and wasn't allowed to. You weren't allowed to. By, by whom? By the hip man and by the rug man. Hit I, man. Tried, I tried so hard, but if I did to back out of it, I'd get a bullet in my head. It was very, very clear. There was no question in my mind on that subject. That, okay, so d were there times, are you now, you're saying, Lee, that there were times after you decided to put out a contract on him, because you did at one time want a contract out on your son. Well, I don't think the word contract, there's a connotation there that I don't like. Okay. Uh, I was talked into something by a con man that I didn't know was a con man, and uh, when I tried to back out of it, he continued being the con man that he actually was that I didn't know about at the time. Okay, let's start from the beginning, Lee. You Go put ahead. You put out an ad, you put in an ad in, in a paper, newspaper, personal ad, is that true? Yes, that's right. Uh, for your daughter, because your daughter was was not dating and you felt that she should be dating, or...? Well, she was crying that she wanted dates, and it's a normal thing. I don't blame her. Mm -hmm. She wanted to meet people, and I can understand that. And, uh, and frankly, I, I'm a mother. I wanted her to meet nice people, too. Uh-huh. And so you put out a personal ad asking for what? Well, what I had said was that she should meet some friends. I mentioned in the ad, if I recall, that she wouldn't have approved of my putting the ad in. But I don't approve of girls going to bars. I mean, I think that's far more dangerous. And, uh, and then it was a big joke. And it turned out, you know, she was laughing. At the beginning, she was laughing herself when, she, when, the, when, the, when the answers came in. OK. So you put the ad in the paper. We just looked at the just ad. Just one ad, yeah. One ad. And... So when this young man showed up, were you, did you dislike him instantly, or what did you think? Well, she had many responses. Um, uh, he was running an ad at the same time. Uh, she told me that uh, somebody was going to meet her here at our home. 
and fine. Now, this is her home as well as mine, as with the way we always figured it, although she wasn't living with us. And some David Brownstein showed up, and we were in shock. Why? Well, first of all, he had dungarees on. He was full of grease. His hands were full of grease. His body was full of grease. Um, his, he, he was just a, a messy-looking individual. Okay. And uh, I, I, I don't, I mean, uh, yeah, at least wash your hands and face. And you don't show up with grease on your dungarees. But he came straight from work. Okay. And he owns, what, a body shop or something? I don't know what he owns now. I couldn't okay. tell you okay. what he owned then. Okay. So he showed up and you disliked him. You just thought he was not appropriate. He didn't dress appropriately. Did he well, be... Well, at least, well, it, you, you just don't some, it'll come into someone's home with the grease all over your face and grease on your hands and mm -hmm. grease all over your clothes and then sit down in the living room and then say, uh, where's the nearest bathroom? We showed him the nearest bathroom, thinking he'd wash up, which was perfectly logical. Uh -huh. And But I didn't expect him to go in and take a shower. And that's what he did. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is the first time you met him and he went in and took a shower? Yes, he admits it in his depot, too. He, then he, went... he went in, he took a shower, there was grease on the walls, grease on uh, my dressy towels, uh -huh. found all the towels on the floor. The place was... Uh, after he left, I was in shock. It took me over a half an hour, 45 minutes, just to scrub the grease off the place. Okay, so so instantly you thought, oh, mistake. Did, that's what you thought, right? This is a mistake. Yes. This is a mistake. Yes. But your daughter did not, obviously. Well, well, she came in to meet him afterwards, and then they left. They said their goodbyes, and I didn't say anything to either one of them, and neither did Milty. Frankly, I don't think I even knew at the time until I went into the bathroom after they left. That he'd showered? That he had... Sh well, I heard the water running, but I would assume that it was just, you know, washing his face and hands. Uh-huh. I didn't know he was showering. Okay. So, when did you start to tell your daughter, or did you find out that she was still continuing to date him, and when did you start to make it known to her that you did not approve? I didn't. I, uh, I figured Arlene is, the, is a tall girl, as you can see, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. And she uh, oh, never would go out with anyone that was shorter than herself. She, um, when at one time I weighed over 200 pounds and she would make comments to me and I, to please my daughter, I lost the weight because she just didn't like fat people. Mm -hmm. So I never saw that, thought that they'd ever get together. You so didn't. I, why say something? I mean, sometimes nowadays you... You say something, and, and girls will do the opposite. So it's best to say, the less you say, the better off you are. So when did, it st when did he start to be a real problem for you? Well, he came the second time. He took a shower. And then the third time, he started, he started to walk around the condo, and he obviously knew that our condo was paid for. And he started to wonder how many square feet. And, uh, and uh, it became very, very obvious that this man was very money conscious mm -hmm. and was, uh, that's all I can say, he was very money conscious. He, he was asking inappropriate questions. Like? And we were in shock. Well, how many square feet? What is this condo worth? Uh, uh, the, it's, it's, and this it's is his second up. visit, right? No, this is the third visit. Third visit, okay. And, uh, and uh, how much do you think you could get for the condo? I mean, these are not, these are not things you just ask. It's just, you just don't do these things. Okay. We'll be right back. We've been joined by David Brownstein, uh, Lee's son-in-law, and the man that she wanted killed. Now, David says he feels safer knowing that Lee is on her way to prison. And also with us is his wife, Arlene, who broke Lee's heart, Lee says, when she got married to David. We're glad to have you join us. Thank you. Um, Arlene, when did your mother make it known to you that she didn't approve of David, or did she? Um, she did. She made it known to me about, I'd say, two months after we started dating. Uh-huh. Um, which was probably the third time she had met him. Uh-huh. Um, it was after Father's Day. We had gone out to dinner for Father's Day. Uh -huh. We had met in April, and it was June, Father's Day, and we had gone out to dinner. And um, after that, the, a few days later, she called me to her, her condo, and she said, um, I think David sells drugs. I think he's, he's this, you know, despicable character, and I don't think you should date him anymore. Her rationale for that was, 
that as we were at dinner that evening, she, uh, David had asked for a wine list, and my, we don't drink, and um, my parents don't drink, and mm -hmm. David will occasionally have a glass of wine. And my father and David started talking about um, poker, and David apparently was somewhat knowledgeable about poker, and that kind of set up little signals to them that this was not the kind of guy they wanted me dating. Mm -hmm. And so she told me that she felt that he was not right for me. Uh -huh. and, and what did you say? That there was really no basis in that, that um, I, I really can't go on that on your, because he likes to have a glass of wine and because he plays poker is not, to me, a reason not to date someone. How do you feel about your mother now? I really have, um, I'm kind of benign mm -hmm. towards her. I, I, I don't really have any feelings. You have no feelings? At this point in time. Mm -hmm. I'm 34, it took me a long time to get here. Yeah. But now, at 34... You have no feelings. I, right. A lot of people ask me if I'm angry, and I'm not angry. I yeah, just You were quoted in the paper saying that you wish she was dead. Never. You, you didn't never, say that. I've never said that. Never said I that. hope she has a nice life. I want her out of my life. We were often misquoted in the newspaper. A lot of misquotes. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm sure you do. <laughs> um, so you don't wish that she were dead? No, not do at all. Do you want her to go to prison now? I want... She's 69 years old. Do you want her to go to prison? I want... This is what I want, and however that can be attained. I want my family and my life to go on as a normal, as all of these people out here have a life. Mm -hmm. I don't want to have to be here on your show. I don't want to have to mm -hmm. come here and defend our name. Mm -hmm. Those are the kinds of things that we've had to do for the last two years. Mm -hmm. Well, we don't I, want to look over our shoulder. And I don't want to look over my shoulder. Don't want to look and over And however that can be accomplished, however it works out, that's what I want. So that means if she has to go to prison, that's... If that's what it so takes. So be it. That's what you're saying. Really. Whatever, whatever it needs to... There was a crime committed, and she's guilty of it. And, and she's been convicted of and that. And she's been convicted crime. of that crime. When you hear your daughter say that, how does it make you feel, Lee? Well, truthfully, Eileen is adopted. And, uh... <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. Eileen is adopted, and in my book, adopting and love means the same thing. Uh -huh. This has been a daughter that we doted on. We gave her everything. We deprived ourselves. And this is what we wanted to do. It's not her fault, it's our fault. We gave her too much. I hate the word Jap, but I think that applies to Arlene. Uh, it was whatever Arlene wanted, Arlene got. And if we had to deprive ourselves of it, fine. But mm -hmm. when you- Jap meaning what? Because a lot of people are saying, what is uh, that? Oh, all right, fine. It's a horrible expression. It's, it, it says actually Jewish American princess, but applies to everybody. Mm -hmm. I think our generation was the generation that uh, we were poor, all of us were poor. That was, we grew up in the depression years, and I think most of us are guilty of trying to give our children what we never had. Okay. And that's exactly what Milty and I did. So Even you're saying though, you spoiled Arlene? I, I know we did. Uh-huh. And so let, let's get down to the story of how this whole, you don't like the word contract, but how it, it came... It wasn't a contract. Okay, yeah. how it came about that you were going to pay to have David killed. I understand you were on the phone and the carpet cleaner was in your house. True? Well, Is this true? It goes back a little further. We've been getting threats from David Brownstein for years. Did I read also that David beat you. Did he beat you? Yes, he did. I had been beaten. I had hair torn out of my head. I think you can see it where mm -hmm. it is now. Uh, there was you beat her up, David? Never. And there was an uh, in attempted fact, rape. In fact, the beating that I supposedly did that it's she'll never plastic. forget, that's a picture that she submitted to the court. She can't remember an exact day that it happened. Mm -hmm. That This day that'll live forever in her memory never quite got an exact date on the calendar. Well, I want to know uh, when, when he came to beat you and what he was beating you for, Lee. What, what did he say? When he... Unknown, unknown to me at the time, uh, Oprah, they had made arrangements for a big wedding of which nobody in our family knew or were ever invited mm -hmm. to have a big, big wedding at the Sheridan in Boca. Mm -hmm. And this was going to be April 20th, 1985. And it was either the last week in February or the first week in March um, uh, I expected friends, and the front door was unlocked, and David came in unexpectedly. I was in bed. I was getting over a cold, told him to go in the den. I didn't want to see him, hadn't seen him. We had had words because we'd been threatened for $2,000 if we wanted to see Arlene, and we refused to submit to blackmail. And uh, he went in the den, and Milted was out shopping, and it was working on a charity checkbook which was then open, 
since we were calling, I was in charge of the tour leader. I was the tour leader. I was also the president of this, char this, this charity organization. And we were calling in the funds for this long tour. Mm -hmm. And uh, so there were many thousands in the checkbook. And what had happened is he saw it. And when I put a heavy robe on, came into the den, he demanded $15,000 out of that checkbook right away. I did not know that they had their wedding plans all made for the Sheridan in Boca, April 20th, 1985. Mm -hmm. So he, he did, did, so, so he, after he demanded the money from you, did he then beat you up? Is that what you're saying? Well, I refuse, it's not my money to give. It was I a think, charity money. Mm -hmm. It was charity money, it's not my money, and even if it was my money, I wasn't going to submit to intimidation, coercion, blackmail. What I did he say though, Lee, what did he say? Give me the He's, money? He said, yes. He said, you make out that check for $15,000. And I said, no way. You'll never be my Nazi jailer. Mm -hmm. Because his first parents, mm -hmm. his first in-laws had been met. And I was not going to do the same thing that they did, submit to blackmail. I knew this already. OK. We'll be right back. Lee Goldsmith has been convicted of um, trying to kill her son-in-law, David, and uh, David and his wife, Arlene, are here. Um, Lee, go ahead, okay. I want to go, go back to, if you don't mind, Lee, the, the, the day the carpet cleaner was in the house and how this all started. All right. Can I say, I'm going to correct one thing, if I may. Because Please. Mil Milty mentioned it during the intermission. I have never been a socialite. I mean, I have worked for charity and raised hundreds of thousands of dollars for charity. But I never raised it for ourselves. Milty and I both worked very hard, and never, that was a misnomer. Okay. That I've never been a socialite. So just just an average, we're just average middle class people. That's okay. all we are. Okay. Okay. Um, um, what was the question? We I'm stand sorry, corrected. Over. I want to go back to the day you were on the phone, and the carpet cleaner said to you, "You seem upset." No, the carpet cleaner that was Milty called in was cleaning the carpets and overheard the conversation was a very heated conversation between David Brownstein and myself mm -hmm. uh, on the phone. And, um, and I told him that I absolutely will not give him the $100,000, and he's not going to kill Milty. He's threatened other people. Mm -hmm. He's threatened many other people in the past, and they've given money. He has a reputation for it, which never came out. Mm -hmm. But he is, I was determined at that time that we were not going to give in. And I was afraid. Believe me, I was shaken. All through this, on the outside, I seem so calm, like I am now. Mm -hmm. But inside, I'm shaking. My heart is, is just jumping. So you, you, he demanded $100,000. The last time you were saying he demanded the $15,000. You didn't give it to them, give it to, didn't give it to him. I refused. OK. And, and then he came back later demanding 100000 Well, I was beaten up at that time pretty badly, too, at that, that when I wouldn't give it to him. And there was an attempted rape. But that's neither here nor there. The fact remains. The, you the, know, the, fact, five, the five. Okay, horse. I'm going to give you a chance to respond. But Lee, if you didn't give him the 15, what made him think he was going to get 100? Well, I didn't give him the 15 in 85, but in 89, he's over $400,000 in debt. He had just bought a brand new house for 186,000, 100,000 interior decorator. Uh, he owed 169,000. Things that he had he had all. Uh, denied on his deposition, but uh, but these were the facts. I, we've, uh, did you ever give him money? Did you ever give him money? Not a dime. Not I a wouldn't dime. give in. Not a dime. I will not That's give exactly in. Correct. Okay. So you're, you you did, deny that you beat well, her or attempted to the, rape her? The five worst crimes you could think of that anybody could ever do, I've been accused of all of them by mm -hmm. her. I've raped, I've beaten, I've extorted, I've. Mm -hmm. All of them. It's all ridiculous. Um, now, see that research that she knew that we bought a house in 1988? Mm -hmm. That's the scary part of Lee. Why? We hadn't talked to her for years before that. Uh -huh. But yet she took the time to research us uh -huh. to find out that we had bought a new house. She, in her own writing, had written about what the furniture looked like inside our house before any of this undercover murder stuff ever started. Uh -huh. So Lee, that's the scary part. Lee, and and how, how is that, Lee? Are you a private investigator on the side? No. Uh, when, when David uh, Brownstein took away Arlene's car, and unknown to us, and took away all the jewelry we had given to her, and known to us, and when I asked Arlene, and she would just evade the issue, 
And then when they sacked Fifth Avenue Cod, that we paid Arlene Sachs bills. I'd buy my things very economical. Right. But Arlene has expensive tastes. And so we agreed, even though she was working, she had a okay. sex card, and it came in as David Goldsmith. Uh -huh. And, and it, Arlene Goldsmith and David Goldsmith. That's when we cut off the card and said, enough is enough. This was three months later after she met him, and that's when we did start investigating him. Okay, I want to get back to the carpet cleaner. So you're on the phone, and, the, and you had this huge disagreement with David on the phone, you get off the phone and the carpet cleaner says what? Carpet cleaner, mild, Casper-looking, milk toast type of an individual comes in and says to me, do you need, I, I, I heard the conversation, and he said, uh, he said, I know somebody that'll do the job and wipe him out, I think that's the word he used, wipe mm -hmm. him out for $20,000. Uh, David had just told, David Brownstein had just told me and this is, by the way, this has been going on for 10 years, that Arlene was pregnant. Mm -hmm. We have never seen the first child. Now it's, she's pregnant again. Although we had sent a gift for the first child, she's pregnant again. Um, at that particular time, uh, my heart was palpitating. Arlene is pregnant. My heart was palpitating. I, I was scared. I was frightened. I was confused. I, 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 I just was illogical. I, I just don't know how to put it. How, how can you possibly explain the feelings at that particular moment of knowing that your daughter is pregnant for the second time? You haven't seen the first child. You were never invited to the wedding, nor was any member of the family invited to the wedding. <laughs> and I'm sorry. And 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 now you're he's demanding a hundred thousand, or he's going to kill Milty. And and if the carpet cleaner. And Milty's your husband. We haven't seen Milty sitting right next to, to yeah, her. Yeah, Milty's so. my husband's a mm hundred -hmm. percent service-connected disabled vet, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and he's 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 worked. He's done things for his. Hi, children. Milty. Sorry. I'm over. Good, good. <coughs> and so did uh, Milty? Did you know all of this was going on? Was no. Lee sharing this with you? No, over. She he was, was sick at the time. He was having teeth pulled. He was having his teeth ground down. And that's how I had the 10000 mm -hmm. because he had been saving it for three years out of his 100% his VA pension. Okay, so then... He saving it in the house. I'm not a wealthy man. Let me, let me ask you this, Lee. I never was. Yeah. Okay, Lee, so then did you trust the carpet cleaner? Did you then... I, and this was so stupid. I had no place to turn. I, 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 Oprah, how can I tell you how, how illogical, how uh -huh. stupid, how, how, I, I was just thinking clearly. I, I, it, it, it just, I was so frightened. I was petrified. My husband's going to be killed. And I know David Brownstein. He says he's going to do something. He's going to do it. He said he's going to beat me up. He beat me up. I, I've been through all this for 10 uh -huh. years. And I was, I should have called the police. I look back. I know I should have called the police. It was a terrible mistake on my part. I know this. Mm -hmm. But what could I do? I, I just wasn't thinking clearly. And this man seemed to, it was, he seemed to offer something that, that was a, an out. Well, how can I put it? And it was such a terrible mistake. I know it. I've always admitted it. Mm -hmm. I didn't know his background. The carpet cleaner's well, background. The, car, I'll, the man is mild looking. He's... Uh, milk they toast. Said, he, he, cap, cast with milk toast. That's what yeah. you say. I mean, he's, he's so, uh, he blends in with the scenery. He was so, he's, he's, he's thin, So short. then you hired, did you then hire him to find somebody, or was he the person oh, you... Oh, no, oh, no. No, he said he knew somebody that... Who, would, we who had, could do it? For 20000 I said, I don't have the 20000 But I was thinking of, then I said to him, he said, well, lady, he says, yeah, he, he says, them cops, you call them cops in. He says, and they're stupid, and the, uh, yeah, yeah, they won't do anything until the yeah, yeah, guy is dead. And, uh, I mean, he was really convinced me, and I really felt that he was right at the moment. Okay, but... we'll be right back. You're appealing this case now. Correct. Right. So, so nobody denies that all of this did happen, and, and Lee just said she realizes it was wrong and all that, but you think you're going to win the appeal? Well, I haven't had a chance to read the trial transcripts because they're not ready, but based on what I've seen, there, seen, there appears to be significant uh, legal issues which we hope will result in a reversal on appeal. Mm -hmm. I don't think we disagree with the basic facts. 
It's the conclusions uh, that should have been drawn from the facts and the conclusion the jury drew. And what conclusions do you think should have been drawn? Well, uh, Lee started to talk about, but we never got time, time ran out. I mean, from the rug man, Casper Milktoast, she'd led into an undercover cop who's a sophisticated uh, police officer and who knows how to set the trap. Uh -huh. And there is a question of uh, once Lee tried to pull out, whether there was entrapment because the police furthered the activity. Uh huh. Um, Lee, did you ever try to pull out? Oh, God, yes, so many times. And I was told I'd have a bullet in my head. This Casper, the only, this Casper Milktoast, um, he kept telling me uh, that I'd have get a, that this trigger man, the, uh, the hip man, six foot three, mm -hmm. when I saw him, I was forced to see him. I never wanted to meet him. And I was forced to meet him in an unshaven, six foot three, in his 30s. Yeah. I was going to go get a bullet in my head, and, and uh, there was no question in my mind that this individual was real mafia, that he was... I've never dealt with people like that before, but one look at him and the way he spoke and the way he talked, and this was a real... But this was the undercover guy, right? The this... undercover guy, and he, he meant business. He, at one time, he, when I tried to pull out, he went like this as if he was going for his gun. And I said, okay, 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 I'm getting the message loud and clear. <laughs> and uh, there, there was just no question that, in my mind, that I would be killed, especially where I was getting calls continually. Don't do it. Don't antagonize this man. He'll kill you uh, immediately. Okay, you say what? He, Lee, no we have an, a, an audience question here, Lee. Go Lee, ahead. I would like to know um, what kind of proof you have that this man allegedly tried to rape you and beat you. Do you have dates, uh, police reports, or something? Uh, no, I never called the police for a couple of reasons. Number one, I was a tour leader, and I was I was calling in thousands of dollars. And this was for charity. This is for charity purposes, and I was afraid it would ruin the tour. The other thing is, he, David Brownstein has a reputation of beating five-year-old children, which this has been proven. Uh, his first wife's beating. former child, <clears throat> he beat his first wife. She went to court and testified, and there was a witness who saw David Brownstein leave the elevator right after I was beaten because my, the security guard called on the phone. That's what stopped the rape. He knew it was a security guard. He knew I was expecting somebody else. But why wouldn't and you call the police, though, Lee, if you'd been beaten up by your son-in-law and attempted I, rape? I was so afraid what he would do to Arlene, mm -hmm. because he has a he he did to his first wife. His a, when a man takes a child, a five-year-old child, mm -hmm. and <laughs> smashes that kid's head against the sh a shower. Because the kid is using too much water. There were neighbors. There was an officer Bray that testified. There were other people that testified. Okay, this I'm going to let Dave. Those are pretty strong accusations. So, David, you want to respond? Yeah, I, if if this little segment doesn't speak for itself, the woman was found guilty. So obviously there was no corroborating evidence at all mm -hmm. for all the allegations. Yes, I was divorced once before I married Arlene. Yes, it was a nasty divorce. I was married for 10 months. It took two years and five months to get divorced. Mm -hmm. But never did I beat my stepson, never did I beat my ex-wife. In fact, at the end of the trial, my ex-wife admitted that the part about the beating was a lie. Mm -hmm. um, Arlene, has he ever beaten you? Never. Mm -hmm. Never beaten me, never touched my kids, mm -hmm. our kids. What do you say? Like well, I think Lee, first of all, is a real busybody, and uh, she's a control freak. And I was just wondering, has she controlled your uh, life before you met him? Absolutely. The destruction of, my, of, of the relationship between my parents and I happened well before David Brownstein was even a thought in anybody's head. I could have married anybody in this audience, and the same thing would have occurred. She has to control, and when I don't let her control, she tries her own methods, and this just is one of her... And certainly I didn't want to hear anything about her controlling me. Uh -huh, that was yeah. just not part of the program at all. I, mean, I, I, I kind of like... <laughs> we'll be back in a moment. <laughs> I'd asked the question earlier, Lee, whether or not you could survive five years in jail. What do you think? Well, my own doctor, Dr. Pollock of Miami Heart Institute, who I've had open heart surgery, has stated that I couldn't survive one year in jail. Uh -huh. He made that statement on the stand. Because if you go to jail, what's going to happen to Milty? <sighs> I'd have to let Milty answer that himself. I don't think he would survive either. Oh, well, I, I would never survive because uh, uh, I... With my handicap, I, I couldn't ever live without Lee. Mm -hmm. I just... Uh, How long I have you all can't... been married? Even... 
Going to be 44 years, Oprah. Mm-hmm. 44 so, years. So, and I want to, and I want, I want to say that Lee is the most wonderful wife a person could ever have, and she also has been the best mother a person can have. Mm -hmm. What has happened in the 10 years with discount? But she had, she was such a good mother. It's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. He gave 150 percent of herself. Mm -hmm. And so, Lee, Milty, when did I, you? Milty? Oprah, I want to tell you something that I cannot, there were two lies here involved, Lee and myself. I, w I will never survive. I will never survive. Can I jump in? And I could, I could tell you about a case that <clears throat> just happened in Broward County. Okay, I don't want to hear about another case, but, <laughs> but, Milty, when did you know all of this was going on? When she was arrested. When she was arrested. When the police came to my apartment. Because she had never told you that she was going to do this? No. No. Milty was sick at the time, and so I would kept Milty out of it. He was very, very sick, running fevers and everything. He had had his two teeth pulled. Okay, he okay, was... okay, I understand. Go ahead. So obviously, Milty, you believe Lee. You think pardon, everything pardon Lee me? is saying is correct. Pardon me? You believe what Lee is saying is correct. You Absolutely. believe everything. Absolutely. Uh, mm -hmm. Even the hostile witness I... said that she's a very truthful person. <laughs> Okay, I, David. That was Edward Marcus um, in his depot. Yeah, so, she, but I've before always, we were I've talking about the beating. Forty years, and she's been the most fruitful person I ever knew. Okay, <laughs> thank, thank you, Milty. David's we're, now speaking. We were David. talking about the beating. Um, she remembers that beating so well, but she forgot about a car accident that she had facial reconstruction surgery as a result of supposedly two weeks before I did this beating, and the pictures coincidentally look so similar. Mm -hmm. uh, but. Uh, uh, the trial, I think, bears out the whole thing. But because he's handicapped or she's old and had heart surgery, does that mean fine, no penalty? And what of my mother, who is a harmless in all of this, that Lee wanted to have acid thrown in her face? That's a whole other, a whole other side yeah. issue that never even came up. That's not a penalty at trial. But so then we just forgive the whole thing because Milt's ill and can't live without her? That's the risk she took when she did the crime. And she admits she did and the crime. And he hasn't gone away. Mm -hmm. He's still here. Mm -hmm. So what's changed? What may, what's ensures his safety? That's, uh, uh, Arlene father. is asking the question, Lee, what ensures David's safety if you don't go to jail? I have worked with retarded children. <laughs> I've worked with disabled war veterans. I have raised funds, hundreds of thousands. I'm not a danger to anyone. In fact, look at me and look at David Brownstein and look what he looks like. And if he's so afraid of me, why did he have to sit in back of me and make comments and be vicious all through the trial? Here's a picture from the trial. And he, was, he wants me in jail because he's busy writing a book. They want miniseries. They, they need the money. Hold the picture up again. Hold the, hold the picture okay. up. Because Because just as he was zooming I'm, in, I'm you... They were laughing. Okay. They were, Is that a man that's scared? Does he look frightened? He's laughing. They're both laughing. Okay. Joining me now is Dr. Herbert Streen. He's a psychotherapist and author of the book, Our Wish to Kill. He says that murderous instincts lie within all of our psyches. I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't know about that. I have never in my life, I don't think, had the desire to kill anybody. I don't think you're aware of it, Oprah. Okay. <laughs> uh, didn't you ever dream of somebody killing somebody? Didn't you ever have a daydream? Uh, let's take Leash. Most of her talking is about other people killing her, right? Mm -hmm. If you've listened to all of the stuff she So you're saying if you have a dream about somebody killing somebody, that, that's you in the dream? That's what I'm saying. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Go I'm ahead. saying that everybody... But just because you dream it doesn't mean you have the desire to do it. Oh, I would say that. You would say I that? I would say that every dream is a wish. Okay. And, and that a lot... And, you see, I can get a lot of people go very... Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> but isn't killing in the dreams like you want... It doesn't necessarily mean you want to murder somebody. I understand what you're saying, because I understand dreams. I interpret my own dreams in the middle of the dream, I say. Um, <laughs> so, so, I'd never get any sleep. I'm, 
I'm dreaming and interpret. So, but in the, it's, you want to get rid of something in your life. If you're having trouble in your life, you may dream of somebody killing something, and that's really you wanting to rid yourself of whatever that problem let's, is. Let's put it this way. It's a matter of degree. Uh, when I said something about dreams, I got a lot of people irritated. Yeah. If I went on and talked some more about somebody else's dream, they might say that stupid Freudian analyst. Uh-huh. Uh, if I insulted them, maybe I'd get a fist. Uh-huh. And what I'm trying to suggest is that there is a Lee in every one of us. The fact that she is very jealous of Arlene becomes very clear. The fact that she wants uh, her son-in-law uh, destroyed is very clear. I would suggest, though, that many, many mothers-in-law are very, very jealous of their sons, what the sons-in-law and daughter have. So that the difference between Ali and you and me is just a matter of degree. Okay, that's a, that's a point, yes. Hi, Lee, if you thought this through real well, what did you think your daughter was gonna feel and her, your children, you have two children? Two children now. How were your children gonna time. feel not having a dad and a husband? Did, did you think about that before you yeah, back? Well, the question you asked, she asked during the break, Lee, is whether or not you felt that Arlene was going to be relieved once David was killed? I don't think it's a question of feeling that Arlene was relieved. Arlene knew about everything, the, the demands for money, the, she knew everything that was going on. Uh, it wasn't a surprise to her. Uh, the, but uh, I think... So I what think did you feel? Once David's dead, Arlene's going to be happy that you've done her a favor? Oh, no, no, no. I didn't want David dead. Mm -hmm. That's just... You, you, don't, you seem to be getting... You don't understand. No, I was forced okay. to go through with this, <clears throat> or I would be dead and Milty would be dead. You're losing track of the fact that Milty had been threatened to be killed. She tried to stop And she I tried was to... trying to save Milty's life. We'll be right back. You said that all of us have this inside of us. So are you saying that it's okay if I have this dream and I want to kill my husband or my sister or something? You saying this is okay? Yes, I'm saying it's very okay to have... Let him finish the sentence. <laughs> Go ahead. It's very okay to have thoughts and feelings and to talk about them like we're doing here. I would suggest that if Lee had an opportunity to talk about how she would have liked to have killed her son-in-law and, and was dealt with with some understanding and sympathy, we wouldn't be here today. As a matter of fact, your question's a wonderful one in that all of us, if we could recognize that we have feelings, thoughts, fantasies, and that's okay, it would stop us from becoming a Lee. But this was more than a fantasy, though. And well, that's... Yeah. Arlene, what do you want to say, really? You haven't talked much here. What do you re really want to say most? I don't want you to go home and feel like I should have said, so. Um, I think what I want to say is um, a crime was committed that if, I guess if I committed a crime and I was on trial for first degree um, solicitation to commit murder, um, I too would come up with a story, whatever, but whatever could get me out of prison. The story she decided to come up with was that David was this kind of diabolical human being, and she was forced, kind of subcategory, battered mother-in-law syndrome, which was like a big rage in Florida when it happened. Um, and that's what she needed to do as her defense. However, You don't believe any of that, though? It, it's not true. It's okay. not a matter of belief. It's, it's, an, it's an untruth. And in return, what happens is now we have to sit here and defend ourselves because things, allegations are, are, being, are being made. And I, I resent the fact that I have to even sit here and tell you how, no, he doesn't beat me. I shouldn't have to tell anybody that he doesn't beat me, that he doesn't steal money, that he doesn't do that. Mm -hmm. It just never occurred. This whole thing never happened. However, that's, that was a convenient thing for her and a way in which she could validate why she wanted to do what she wanted to do. It, it's, it's simply a control issue. It's something that's, that's been in our family well, be, excuse me, well before David and I ever even met. Mm -hmm. it's, it, it's, a, it's a continuum, it, it, and it will continue until, until. Until. Until they Until. pass on. Yeah. Who had the question about trusting the daughter? Yeah. Um, this is for Lee. You say your daughter is the you raised her well, and she knows what's right and wrong. I mean, don't you have any confidence in her marrying David? I mean, in her judgment calls. So the question um, really is: If you raise such a great daughter, then why not trust your daughter's judgments? Uh, let me put it this way: I tried to. We made an engagement party. That's uh -huh. not being said. We sent a gift for the baby, although we've never seen the baby. We've mm -hmm. sent a nine-page letter. I tried to explain to her that you can only have one mother and father in this world. 
that she closed the door on us. We never closed the door on her. Uh, we, that was after I was beating. No, no, I was making you, every uh, attempt to okay. for reconciliation. Okay. Arlene, does this make you sad? You know, I think everyone, everyone in life has their own baggage, and they all have their story, and they all have their, their little history that they have to bring with them. Mine, unfortunately, is more publicized than most. I think, yeah, I was sad, but I didn't wake up one day and suddenly be able to sit here and cope with it. It's taken me a long time to cope with the fact I haven't talked to my parents in six years. Um, it's taken me a long time to come to grips with that. But I also didn't wake up one day six years ago and say, I'm not going to speak to them. There were years of battle and years of guilt and years of, of, of conflict until I finally came to the realization and can realize that I can look myself in the mirror every single day and know I did the best I could. Okay, a lot of people don't understand the hitman and undercover cop thing. The rug man was first approached. That came out in the trial. Lee said that he approached her, but apparently in the trial it was that she got off the phone, was upset. She went to the, the rug man. The rug man then called Crime Stoppers. Is that not true? Either called Crime Stoppers or went directly to the undercover police. Okay, so and the rug. So there in. never was a real hitman. You all understand? The rug man asked her about it, then went to the police or called Crime Stoppers, and it was a sort of a setup from the beginning. At that, at that point, it became an undercover operation, became an capitalizing undercover. on every person's wish to kill. Okay. Bye, everybody.